Hello everyone, I want to talk today about the real powers that are behind the agendas that are going on. Uh, I think this is important to talk about because there's a whole load of people, probably from the false teaching of David Icke and the Theosophists, because what David Icke teaches is Theosophy. And that's the same, that, I mean, that's the teaching of Alice Bailey and the United Nations and the Luciferian influence. So to refute and to expose the false teaching of theosophy, which has been present at the start of the truth movement, we are now, today we're going to look at the real powers, some of the real origin of the New World Order Luciferian agenda and the effect it's having on society. We're going to look at that. There's people out there who would who would make you believe that the Jews control the world. And this is an age-old lie. This is the same lie that Hitler and the Nazis propelled. And it, it, it's a stupid, ridiculous, foolish thing to believe. Because you cannot blame a whole culture for the actions of a few. This is where fascism comes from. This is, an, this is a fascist ideology. It's like saying everyone in America is responsible for the actions of George Bush. Or it's like saying uh, everyone in England is responsible for slavery. It's also like saying it's the everyone who's a Christian is responsible for the actions of the Vatican. It is just really stupid and uh, and so this lie, we need to look back into the 1600s, into the philosophies of the Sabbateans. Now, a lot of people, you rarely ever hear the Sabbateans talked about in the truth movement, or the Frankists. We hear a lot about the Illuminati, but the Illuminati is just one branch of this secret society cult behaviour. So let's go back to the Sabbateans and the Frankists in 1600, 1666. Would you believe it? Yes, 1666. Sabbatai Zevi claimed to be the Messiah. So he was a false Messiah in the 1600s. And uh, this, is, this is where the, the Sabbateans came from. And I believe it's slightly later, the Frankists. So... Th Remember the Illuminati, the Illuminati was started uh, in 1776 and he had potential ties to the Jesuits. So we're talking about a hundred years before that in 1666. We had this cult. Now this cult were extradited from mainline Jewry. They were extradited from Judaism. So Judaism, Torah-believing Judaism, thought these people to be heretics, the Sabbateans. They were seen as heretics, so they were extradited from Judaism. So there's your first clue that Jew Jews rejected these secret society cult members. So to say it's a Jews controlling the world conspiracy is utterly foolish when you look at the history itself and how the Jewish culture rejected those secret societies as being heretics. So let me just let's, let me just repeat that, that Jews rejected the Sabbateans and secret society members and then the Illuminati which came a hundred years later was more of a Gentile involvement in Europe. So we've got both Jews and Gentiles but I'd probably say that both Jews and Gentiles, ordinary people, would reject, um, you know, the secret societies. So we're talking about a cult. We're talking about cults here. Um, you know, this is not mainline stuff. Jesuits are not Christian, just like the Sabbateans and Frankists are not Jewish. Because real Christianity and real normal people, normal Jews, do would not. Um, like the behaviour of of this, and and so to blame a whole culture 
for the actions of a cult, of, of a secret few, is just purely ridiculous. If you've been caught up in a mentality that blames Jews or, or claims that Israel as a nation is responsible for the actions of a cult, then you really need to walk out of it because you're literally walking into fascism yourself. You're literally starting to believe the propaganda of Hitler. So be careful about that. But So let's look. We need to look at the origin of what's going on. Um, so we've got the Illuminati, which is obviously a big part of it. But before that, we've got the Sabbateans, the Frankists. So the Sabbateans philosophy was the satanic law of reversal. That was one of them. And this that's in, important to understand because we see in this day and age the influx of this philosophy starting to take over our society. We see the satanic law of reversal. You know, we see this everywhere. So this this answers why we're seeing everything being turned upside down. So how many times have you seen this? You're like, oh my goodness, like that that's completely opposite. This is completely inverted. It's blaming the victim and uh and elevating the perpetrator i mean how many that's exactly what's going on with with uh, people's view on the holocaust you know blaming the victims and and claiming that hitler is somehow was somehow doing something right and that's the satanic law of reversal in action that's an extreme example but we've seen it in many different places with gender gender politics and and um just many things in society you know the sin is being seen as good whilst the people that stand for good morality are seen as the 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 bad the predator so we're seeing that over and over i'm sure you can think of your your own examples of how that's manifesting in society the satanic law of reversal everything being turned upside down so that was a sabbatean philosophy a secret cult from the 1600s and uh, the Bible says woe to those who, who change light for darkness and darkness for light and so that's exposing the philosophy so with this turning everything upside down lastly this could be related but it was an interesting point my friend brought up in that the, the gentilization of the Jews and the Judaizing of the Gentiles how many times have we seen this in our day and age now? On, particularly in the truth movement, in certain aspects of the truth movement and in other places, just, just claiming that the Gentiles should be more Jewish and the Jews should be more Gentilish. And that's an, that could be, it fits with the same principle of turning everything upside down, the satanic law of reversal. And actually, you know, even with extreme feminazi, feminism, all these liberal agendas we see, they're turning everything upside down, turning uh, marriages upside down, turning roles upside down. It's just incredible. Once you start to really think about it, we see this satanic law of reversal. So also that Christians are bad and sinning is good, and that and that leads us on to the next point. Another principle by which the Sabbateans operated was salvation by sin, not salvation from sin, but salvation by sin. So we've looked at commercials before, and we, and I've shown on there the filling up of the cup of abominations the overflowing of the cup of filth she gets the birth pangs and the cup falls from out of her hand there's the second reference to the outpouring of the cup of sin the cup of filth and on the cup there you can see there's actually a tree so it's that same reference to the falling tree the uh, breaking through the veil the tree of good and evil falling down and this cup overflows again, that same reference to the cup of tea, the cup of tau, uh, the cup of filth. 
And you can see that directly parallel to that, on the other side, the other side of the veil, uh, that you see the smashing glass, the breaking through the firmament, smashing through the veil. And it's directly as a result of that cup of sin, that cup of filth uh, spilling out. So it's like a cradle of filth. And, and this is actually, as you saw, the Antichrist, well, the child figure, the sun child figure, which is Tammuz, Nimrod, the Antichrist. And it's being birthed out of this cradle of filth directly as a contributing factor to the outpouring of the cup of sin, the increase of sin in the world, which is a belief they have. And, we, and I've shown on there the filling up of the cup of abominations, the overflowing of the cup of filth. I've shown that many times that we see this spilling out of this cup of abominations. And that is what is being shown, another philosophy of the Sabbateans. Because they taught that you, you could be redeemed, salvation by sin, by filling up the cup of filth. And uh, they believed that if they corrupted the whole world, uh, then they would force God's hand, so to speak, and their Messiah would come. Their false Messiah would come. So essentially they wanted to plunge the, the world into darkness in order to provoke uh, the new age of their Messiah. So they really did believe that. You have to make the whole world either good or the whole world bad. And then um, the, the Messiah would come. So because they couldn't make the whole world good, they then would make the whole world bad. So we're seeing this corruption of society at every level. And it seems like this, this is the time this is happening. Remember, everything is by God's true plan. Uh, whatever whatever is done, whatever people or societies or leaders think that they're doing, they can't go beyond what God has ordained as part of his plan. So don't so even though we're seeing all of this, don't elevate the elite beyond the power of God. Now what do I mean by that? I mean by saying, for example, just a just an example by saying that the Israel, the state of Israel, the, the, the land, the country that is Israel today, by saying that that's only there by the Rothschilds, is almost elevating the Rothschilds, the power, quote-unquote power of the Rothschilds, above the power of God. It's a very, very bad place to be in, to be saying, to be believing that the elite families or secret societies have more power in the plan in in the events that take place in this world as actually undermining in a sense god's god's hand in everything that takes place now as for the state of israel itself even if there's rothschild involvement i mean the, with, with every nation there pretty much there's there's elite groups or elite people involved in their history, in their establishment? Of course. Why wouldn't there be? Because every nation in this world, because there's there's people with the power and authority in this world uh, that are involved, of course, because they are the ones that have the influence to be able to make certain things happen in this world. That, that power and authority is only comes from above, as Jesus said to Pilate. You know that people only have power in this world uh, from what has been given to them from above. So, with the establishment of the state of Israel, there were different people involved. There were people involved that probably had their own agendas. But it's not just black and white for a start. The, you know, if you really look into the history, and I would recommend really looking in, into the history away from the truth, from, you know, YouTube and things like that. I attended uh, lectures in Jerusalem, which were very informative. Um, the, the history is not just black and white. It wasn't just a, a load of Jewish people in Europe that in 1948 decided that they have a right to go and claim um, Palestine and the Rothschilds signed something and and they all poured in that's, that's so far from the truth 
that's just the skewed theosophical David Icke version of history that you that's been fed to the truth movement from the start and that's not truth people have almost given themselves over to just thinking well David Icke said it you know it spread throughout now many people believe it so therefore it's truth this is not biblical teaching friends uh, we were told in the Bible that um, the, the state of it, that Israel would be back and the Jews would return to Jerusalem that it would be trampled under the feet of the Gentiles um, for a while and it was for two th almost 2,000 years it says that uh, there's nobody in the land Mark Twain Mark Twain is not an Arab, he's not a Jew he's not a Christian 1867 he comes with a lot of people to the land of Israel they travel from Syria in the north to Egypt all the way in the south they travel to Jordan and he's on donkeys horses camels they're on the ground his quotes are that he'll travel for 30 miles and never see a human being now are there people yes there's Bedouin there's always a remnant of Jew but the land is desolate just like God said he would make it and there's very few people and in 147 years, we go from a few thousand Jews to 7.5 million today. And it begins with Genesis 13 to Abraham. And yet people say, kind of believe that in 1948, a lot of Jews just came here and stole land and right. slaughtered, yeah. slaughtered people. And actually, if we do the research, you'll find out that the first Jews who started to come in the late 1800s they were paying exorbitant prices for land that was swampland, dirt, rock, and nothing would grow. And then we see what we see today. With land, is, we export 60% of our fruits and vegetables and all the produce to Europe. And uh, as we continue to travel today, you're going to see how beautiful the land is, especially in Benjamin.